Hey guys, my name is Marcel Ernie. This is the Ernie Racing YouTube channel where we race super bikes, we enduro dirt bike, and now we're into the EMTB, um, downhill mountain biking where you can pedal up. Because uh, I like motors, I don't want to pedal up a hill by myself. So I got this bike and I needed a pump. Unfortunately, these bikes like Norco, they give you like air shock, air forks, but they don't even give you a freaking shock pump so i had to buy shock pump so i looked online and pretty much this one is so generic that anybody puts their name on it so fox and rock shock and geo or whatever how you ever pronounce it they just kind of change the little name right there and uh, they call it their own so this is just one company made probably in like china or who knows um somewhere it doesn't say obviously made in taiwan so they make these and everybody rebrands them. They sell for around 100 Canadian, maybe 110, 115. This one actually retail was, uh, it doesn't even say. So anyways, I got this. And then I realized the downsides of this and I bought another one. And I went and bought the Lesney. And it's super compact, as you can see, that you could fit it in your backpack. So of course the concern is, you know, are you gonna be able to pump it up to 250 PSI for that rear shock? And I wanna show you because when I looked online, I'm like, hey, what's the best shock pump? There's some sites would have the top five and some videos, but they didn't mention any of the details, any of the issues I had. And so number one, we everybody talks about is when you attach it to your shock, how much PSI does your shock lose? Because a lot of them advertise that there's a no loss valve system. And this cheap one, whether they advertise or not, is a big loss when you first put it on. So the shock, last time I did it was uh, 243 PSI in, this is a Vivid um, Select Plus. And so if I screw this on, that 243, as soon as I get it on and the air is finally sealed, it's gonna show around 233. It'll lose around 10 PSI. And if you're like me and you wanna have exact PSI, well, what? and you don't know what you had in there, like I bought the bike, the shop gave it to me, and I'm like, well, what have I been riding the last 10 rides on? I wanna know, because when I make a change now, what, what, which, how, which way am I going, plus or minus? So that's a big deal to me that it loses the air when you put it on so you don't even know what you started with unless you have your notes going. So obviously you need to start building consistency and then you have to do further testing. The other thing I didn't like was it leaked at the pivot. So as soon as I put it on my fork, which I did first, and you start to, you actually have to, you know, it's, it, it spins at the bottom right here, but as soon as you start getting tight, then this whole thing starts spinning. So then you pretty much go like this and this is the best way to do it. Um, and so forth and of course it lets the PSI down so and then we can check the PSI with like you know the most expensive my long acre from superbike racing this thing's also it measures temperature measures PSI it can save all the things and have you and this is you know 600 US and versus 100 Canadian and this one was only 115 Canadian so not much more so first thing first this show you that this one has no loss and it's compact and the, the head of it attaches to itself for easy transportation. See, it pops off like that. And so their head is a no loss system and it'll show exactly, so I'll pull the fork cap off here. And so you turn it on with just, uh, hold it down for a few seconds so it won't accidentally turn on in your pocket, which is nice. And it, it kind of shows the numbers in vertical and PSI or bar. And um, just screw it on. You see the number zero up above if you're looking at the camera. Boom, 69. And you didn't even hear any loss, did you? So let's put like 71 in there. Oops, I just hit the bar button. I switched for a big bar. 70, 71. Right there. Oh. Just uh, 71, and then so now, well, 72, and you can do it like you can go like at the top. There's a little, just a little guy, right? So you can bring it down a psi, but it's really easy to pump, really easy. So there, 71 exact, 
And, oh, well, it dropped to 70. One more pump. Oops, I took it off again. Well, uh, trial and error. 72. Sorry, you guys. So, 71. Okay, unscrew it. So the little air loss that you heard was actually in the tube itself. It's like a braided tube. Now, if I put this back on, let's just show you. It's going to be right around 70 again. Okay, and you can do it like this. See, 71, right? So it doesn't lose any pressure between taking it off and putting it on. It, you know, one PSI jumps around, right? But you take the cheap one that everybody's buying and relabeling. Let's turn it on. Max 300 PSI, and that one does 350. And you screw this end on. There, it breaks through. Well, that one actually worked not too bad that time. 69. It's more in the shock with high pressure, actually, now that we're testing again. So... Up to 70, 71. Okay, so <clears throat> now we're gonna go check it again. Hmm. This is my 24 Norco range here. Uh, so it's actually working not too bad on low pressure. There, listen. No, up here. So it's leaking. So I can hear that. I'm assuming the camera. So this pivot is leaking. So when you're using it, you got to be like super careful not to move it. Like just keep it straight up and down. So now we're down to 63, right? Down. To, see, it says down to 63, 62. It's just losing PSI. It's not from that. So let's get it back up. So that's the biggest issue, it, it leaks. And when you see it on the shock, it loses pressure when you put it on and off. Okay, so, but it is accurate, it is accurate. Okay, there's 72. So when I take it off, I let the whole thing spin like that. All right, and um, to compare on a gauge like such as this, um, it has to fill the tube as well, and there'll be a loss when you take it off, but, um, 64.2, right, as an example. Um, and then if you, so that, it loses it because it fills the chamber. And we throw this guy back on. This is definitely an in-depth test. So it should be around 64, 65. Oh, there, 65, just like my expensive gauge showed, but obviously the, it's designed for a big air actuation, 65. So this thing is just working well in that sense. So now we're gonna test out the shock. Now we're dealing with high pressure. So take off the cap, and so I said the last time I pumped it up was with this one just yesterday at 243. I have written down, so should be no loss when I screw it on. It, not more than one psi. You come over here. We got 235. Maybe I had a look. And so the best way to pump it is also like kind of use this as a base, and then just. You can see it going up. Let's make sure I get this one tight enough. Yeah. 243 right there. Okay, 242. Oh. It's a little hard to pump at this pressure, but 243. Okay, 243. So now, my hands are all slippery. A little bit of loss there, 243. I'll come around this side and put it back on. I'll just dry my finger here. All right, it should be around 243 again. Okay, 237. 237, so a few PSI loss on the out to the in. We'll bring it back up and we'll try the other one. 
Okay, there's 243. The way it works is it creates like a seal as you screw over top of it. It screws over the threads of the Schrader valve and then it's sealed with the Schrader valve. Then as you keep screwing it, it allows you to screw more and then it breaks the air of the valve inside. All right, so 243. Now this one I need to like spin the whole thing on from this angle. Let's turn it on. Okay. I gotta spin it with it. 233. 233, so it lost 10 PSI. And it's hard to do this one too. None of them are easy at this high pressure. And I gotta hold, it leaks, right? So I gotta hold it, this, this pivot really steady. 240. All right, 244. 244, 245, 245. Now we gotta try to get it off without losing too much air. Spinning the whole bitch around, beep. Okay, now if we go back and try to redo it, what is it gonna have, right? Two thirty-five. So yeah, you lose around ten psi, I guess. And then oil is coming out of my air shock. See, and there's some oil mixed in there. Um, so I'll fill it back up to. 40 and we'll test it with the other one and because the other one doesn't it only loses like one or two But I've had it not lose any before Okay, so 243 And we're gonna grab the other guy and um, Show you the difference. So at a $15 difference. This thing is so much more compact um, And doesn't lose as much when you connect or dis disconnect and you can spin it on a lot easier. 239. So it's losing around 4 psi. 4 psi on this one. So when you connect it. But when you disconnect it, oh, 240. I didn't even pump it yet. So yeah, it's losing around 3. So we're going to go back up to two, 243, which is what we want exactly. And go from there, unscrew it. There we go, so we're set, 243, and that's the difference between the two. Um, it was a big, when I did this yesterday, it was so obvious that this one jumped, and this one didn't seem to jump down at all. But I guess it all comes down to the pressure. So when you have this at 71, and you pump it up, and reattach it, it just stays at 71. Shouldn't you do it again to make sure it didn't lose anything? Check the rear again. Uh -huh. Sure, we can do a final check, but we know that one will lose 10, like uh -huh. it's been repeatable. Yeah. This one. Two thirty-seven. So when when you attach it, you know, again. I guess it's inevitable you lose a little PSI. 238 is reading right now. 237, 238 is jumping around. So run 5 PSI, 10 PSI um, when you reattach it, right? Yeah, at this pressure. So pump it back up. So anyways, I just, I really, I'm going to take that one back. I'm keeping this one. But with this test team, I realized that it does lose a little bit when you attach it. I guess that's unavoidable. So anyways, just wanted to show you guys your options. I would choose this one. It's all aluminum. Um, it's not plastic. It doesn't leak. That's the biggest thing. The thing was leaking at the chuck head, at the pivot head. It's more compact too. It's easier Super, to yeah. take. I'm going to be able to take it on the trail and make adjustments on the trail. 243, okay. All right, anyways, that's, that's the overview, comparing, oh, I wonder where this one is made, actually, Europe, Berlin, it's made in Berlin, I guess, 
And this is from Lenzi USA, registered United States. Yeah. Hmm. UK importer upgrade bikes. So anyways, so we got Taiwan and Berlin. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. Yeah, Check cool. out this artwork. Oh yeah, artwork's for sale. Uh, 5,000 US dollars for uh, one of those two paintings. Yep.